In this video, I just want to walk you through the process of setting up the labs using Cengage uh, as MindTap for um, uh, their live lab environment. So if you don't already have an account for Cengage as an instructor, you can easily create one. You can either contact the Cengage rep or you can simply sign up. When you click on sign in, um, you can uh, click on the link for faculty and in that link you can sign up. Uh, just make sure you use your faculty email address. So I'm going to go ahead and log in with my account. So when you log in as a faculty member, you'll be able to search for materials up here on the top. And the, uh, the material that I'm going to set up a lab for is going to be uh, using Tom Show's MCSA 2012 uh, intro to Windows Server 2012, I should say, um, including the vir live virtual machine labs. So to find this, all I did is I, I went up here and I searched for the, uh, the books ISBN, which you can see right here. Those are the ISBNs. So if you search for the ISBN, it'll come up. You click on the button to add it to add those resources to your faculty portal, and then you'll be able to select it. You can see I've got books for other classes I teach in my list here. They all show up here once you add them. It's kind of nice because you can uh, read the book right from here if you want to. You can just click to go right into the ebook. But what you want to look for once you add the book is down here at the bottom. It says MindTap Networking Lab for Tom Show's MCSA Guide to Installing and Configuring Blah Blah Blah. So um, if you don't see this stuff at the bottom, you have to click. So there's two little arrows right here. If they're pointing to the right, you have to click on it and it'll pull it down. And you can manage your courses, create a course, and create course master in sections. So the easy way to do this, uh, if this is your first time, you'll go in here and, and click on create a course. So I'm going to create a new course. I'm going to give the course a name. So demo server one and for example if my course were starting on September 25th I would select September 25th and then give it an end date and I usually give it an end date past the end of the quarter that way for these types of things that way if students are running behind or to give an incomplete for somebody for whatever reason you don't have to go in here and change it um, I'm just gonna make up a section number you can add a TA or an additional resource that can grade in here. So once I put the basic details in, I click on Create Course. It'll take a second. So it's kind of nice because up here, they give you the URL that you can give students. So you can put this right in Blackboard. So students can click this to get directly to the, the, the MindTap site. Uh, and you can also uh, print the instructions for students. So what I do for Blackboard, uh, when I do these types of things is I print these instructions to PDF and just upload the PDF in the Blackboard so they can view it right in Blackboard, those instructions. And then they'll need this course key in order to access this lab site. So when they connect, they have to put the course key. Now they did have to purchase access to the labs through Cengage. Um, so the bookstore should have that information for the students. It's, it, could be, it can be sold as a bundle uh, for the textbook and MindTap labs. I think uh, it should be around $75 for the students to buy to purchase both together. If it's the ebook and the lab access, and if it's for um, six months, so they can purchase six months access to the book and the labs, um, and it's pretty pretty reasonable. So once you get this set up, I can uh, go right into the course. So I'm going to click on the course name here, and I'll be able to access this from the Cengage site anytime I, I need it. So I'm going to enter the course. So once you get in, they have a little tutorial that kind of shows you the lay of the land and, and, and where all these different options are. It's a little tricky, so I'm going to show you how to set this up. So um, so it breaks up into weeks for you. So you'll have all your weeks up here. But you have to add the content for the weeks, the lab content. Uh, now you can scroll through the weeks by clicking the little arrows on the left and the right. Uh, and you can see there's no activities here. Um, but if you click on this little item right here that says Unit View, this opens up the different units in the book. And I can click into these, and it can and it shows me what the uh, what available activities there are. So for unit one, for example, um, I could assign that the students read the uh, the book, and if they click on this, they go right into the book, and they can read it right here uh, within MindTap. So they can click through and read the ebook, and just you know they can go through the book. So let me go back. So back here on the main screen. Uh, the next item over here is the uh, the date manager view. So this is where you can set up 
when you're going to release the activities for students. So for example, if uh, there's a practice lab here, so I might want to assign this practice lab for my students and uh, maybe that's going to be in the first week. So I'll select uh, the, 20, the 25th for when it's going to open and I'm going to give the students maybe till the 13th to do that. And then uh, again, I'll, uh, I'll give them access to the user guide. I'll open that up right here on the 25th and I'll make that available indefinitely to the end of the course. And again, more of these practice labs. That way students, and this is, would be ungraded uh, material so students can get familiar with this environment before they have to do a real lab. I'll also open up the reading. That way the students can, uh, can read the sections in the book if they want to. And I always just leave the readings open for most of my classes throughout the entire class. Uh, so this would be uh, unit two. Um, now I could assign the unit two reading. I could make it something that opens up um, in that week. So I'll do that here, but sometimes I open this stuff up earlier um, when I'm doing classes like this. And this is kind of similar to other tools. There's, there's lots of tools like this. So here we go. Here's the practice lab for installing and configuring servers. This is the first graded lab where the students would be asked to install a server. So I might uh, schedule this lab to begin on, the, uh, on October 2nd. And I'll give the students until, and I like to put a, a date on here that they have to finish this lab. Um, so I'm going to give them until the 14th to do this lab. That way they're not trickling in later. So, and I'll go this far for this demonstration. So at this point, I should see um, these options. So when students log in, they're going to see in each week, it's going to show them that this stuff is, uh, is due for that week. So the activity that I'm going to add for week one for my students would be, uh, so I'll click in here to add activity. Now I could just add a unit, which would add an entire unit. So if I did that, um, you know, I would put the first unit for the textbook, but you know, just to keep it simple, I could also just add individual activities. So I would go into uh, this list. So I want to do a, uh, a mind tap activity. So another method to manage the access for the students is, um, and I and I would re probably recommend students view this this way. If they go to the unit view um, from in here, you can assign access to these uh, through through this view as well. So for example, in uh, in if I go into unit two, if I were a student and I click on unit two, it shows me that I should be reading, um, installing Windows Server, and you know doing Practice Lab two one. And I would reference these unit numbers from Blackboard if you wanted to reorder them, you know, for the for teaching it. You know, you could just say, you know, use unit three or find the reading in unit three and in mind tap and then, uh, you know, do lab two dash one or whatever it is. Um, so they could find it this way and then they could just click on it to begin uh, the lab. And I'll show you what the labs look like here in just a second. So I'm going to go back to the main screen. Uh, so as they go through this list and what you could do is, for example, let's say unit three. Um, unit three just has readings. There's no labs. Um, but then if I click on unit four, we should see some labs in here. So here are some labs. You may not see them. You have to click on this for them to pop up down here. But if I wanted to, so notice that these don't have any due dates or anything like that. So you can modify that. You can click on edit and I can put in the dates that I want these to be uh, available and due for the students. You can also, for the labs, if you click on edit, you can edit the names of the, uh, or the descriptions to make it match what you have in, in Blackboard, for example. And you could add your due dates, your, your available dates and your due dates for the students. And if you want, if you hit edit options, you can change the grading. Um, so you can make it gradable, uh, put the maximum score and so forth. And then you can grade them right here in MindTap. So you'll see a list of your students and you can go through and as students complete their labs, you can go through and grade uh, the labs. And it has a structured, um, it's structured grading for the labs. So it shows you what tasks the students were able to complete. Um, and I'll show you what the labs look like here in just a minute. So it, it does make it a lot easier to grade. Um, it's not like in the V labs where we have to tell students to take screenshots and, you know, then they just all share the screenshots and you end up getting the same screenshot from 12 different students. Um, you know, it's all controlled in here. So you know that they went through and went into those steps and they read through the lab guide and all that stuff. So let me show you what the labs actually look like. So if, um, if we click on, let me go up here. So we're going to do the practice lab. 
or not the practice lab, I'll do the installation lab. So we'll do installing Windows Server. Um, so you'll see that basically these labs, so let me click on this. Um, once they click on the lab, they click to start the assignment. It starts a clock because what happens is the, the uh, in MindTap, they actually spin up and, and allocate virtual servers for the student when they click to start the lab. In each lab, they're going to have a, uh, um, a lab guide down the left-hand side. So on the left, this is the lab guide that tells them what to do. And then on the right-hand side is their access to their virtual machine. So on the left is the guide, on the right is the actual virtual machine, which is great because they're not trying to, you know, bring up multiple windows and all that stuff. Um, so it does, it does, I think, make it easier for the student. So um, this is just a little thing that kind of tells the student what their, you know, what where the lab guide is. It's kind of a little introduction. So I'm going to close that. And over here, basically every lab, and this is what I like about this, every single lab, it shows you a diagram. Uh, now this is a simple one because we're just going to install Windows on one server, but they uh, they show you a nice diagram of what the lab environment looks like. So many of these labs have four or five servers because maybe you're doing Active Directory or DNS or DHCP. All of the virtual networking is set up for you so they use software-defined networking um, to, to sort of create this virtual network that the students can configure, uh, which is great. So it's sort of a whole lab environment uh, all in this little browser, and it's all managed by Cengage, so it's great. We don't have to do anything except uh, tell the students to do the lab. Um, all right, so once the student is in here, um, if we read this in this module, you'll be working on the following equipment to carry out. It tells you what the equipment is. To start, simply choose the device and click power on. In some cases, the device may power on automatically. So if I come over here, I'm going to click on power on. It says busy, so it's giving you kind of a, a, a little indicator to tell you how long it's going to be until the machine is actually powered on and ready to go. And if I click next down here, so now in this exercise, we're going to perform a full installation and configure 2012. So first we create an empty virtual machine, right? So you're going to power on the required devices to connect to, um, to PLA, BHY, PERV. Uh, so from the manager console, click tools, select Hyper-V manager, uh, click the machine, new virtual machine. So we're going to create a new virtual machine. Um, so before you begin, click next, et cetera, et cetera. So it walks them through all the steps. So we're going to close this. I'm going to say, don't show this again, because we don't need to see that anymore. So you can see this is an actual machine. It's an actual VM. Um, and I can, uh, you know, click on stuff just like a real computer, right? It's not a simulation. And so what they're doing in this lab is they have the student basically, oops, I didn't mean to open the glossary. So it is a little weird sometimes to click with the mouse like any other virtual machine. But um, so we're going to go into Hyper-V. And they're going to have us um, spin up our uh, our virtual machine by creating a new virtual machine. So we're going to, uh, let's see, let's follow the steps here. So step number one is uh, we're going to go to Hyper-V Manager. Step number two, right click on um, our machine. And we're going to do... Oops. New virtual machine. So new virtual machine. And of course the instructions will tell us exactly what we should be doing in each one of these steps as we step through this. Now, I should mention, my, I'm using a small browser window here because of the video, but if I were a student or if I were doing this for real, I'd probably do like a full screen on a bigger monitor so I could see it. Um, so for sure, I would recommend for students, you know, try to use a uh, the largest monitor. But you can also shrink the instructions. They could print the instructions if they want uh, and then and then hide the instructions in the, uh, in the window here so they can maximize that screen. Um, it does automatically, um, there's a counter down here at the bottom. So when it creates this VM, eventually it's going to go away if they don't do anything. So if they walk away for an hour, when they come back, they're going to lose everything. So they do have to make sure once they sit down to do a lab that they're they're actually doing stuff. I don't think you have to finish it within that time frame. Um, as long as you're moving the mouse around, you can extend the time. As long as you're sitting in front of it, 
the other thing I want to mention about these labs, these virtual labs, is it's um, they the, these virtual labs. Um, um, if the student starts a lab, so right now I'm doing the install Windows lab, but when you spin up these virtual lab environments, um, all of the virtual machines are already pre-configured for that lab. So let's say a student decided not to do lab four, right, which is configuring disk storage and and disk and disk management and so forth. If they decided to skip that lab and go right to the Active Directory lab, for example, or let's say they skip the Active Directory lab for whatever reason, maybe they're sick that week, maybe they just didn't feel like doing it, who knows, you know, or like our typical students, they think they know everything already, so they decide not to do it um, because they're so smart. So then they decide to go right to the DNS lab. Well, that's okay. When they spin up the DNS lab, it's going to already have everything they should have done in the Active Directory lab. So it already has those services and roles installed. They don't have to go through all that again. So it does it does kind of create all that stuff for you. So, uh, so this is the MindTap lab environment. And I just wanted to give you a brief overview for it and uh, and how to configure it and how it's going to work for the students. Um, I didn't show you how the grading works, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, you can once students sign up for MindTap and they join your class in MindTap, then you'll have a uh, grading view where you can grade their labs. Uh, and that's pretty much the only thing that's in MindTap is going to be these labs. Um, everything else you would do in Blackboard, obviously. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.